Somewhere out there right now is at least one Shadowlands Warlock who can't wait to show off their elite demonology skill in Wrath Classic. Yeah, we got some bad news for you. But it's a good thing you are tuning in because we will be covering the ranged DPS meta for Season 5. We consulted some of the most elite Wrath players around and had them submit their tier list to us relying on their decades of experience. This is one of many videos we have produced with these players and many more can be found at skillcap.com. Our courses teach you how to play your class just like a gladiator in arena and before you know it you will be going up and rating faster than anyone else. In fact, we're so confident in your results that we even offer a rating game guarantee while actively using our website. So what are you waiting for? Visit the link below to get started with an exclusive discount. Anyway, let's kick things off at the S tier with two specs that will come to define the Season 5 meta. First up, Elemental Shaman. This really shouldn't come as a surprise. They are by far one of the most versatile casters in the game and can synergize quite nicely with pretty much any other class in 3v3. This is mostly due to their insane utility with the low cooldown on Grounding Totem and a spammable Tremor Totem, which can carry even the worst healer out of sticky situations. One key advantage Elemental has is a 15 second cooldown on an AoE route through Earthbind Totem. Superficially, all this utility might not seem like a big deal, but being able to control an entire melee cleave with one button is immensely powerful, especially since only two classes can spam to spell magic. Having any anti-melee tech will be incredibly important in the cleave heavy meta of Season 5. On the other side of things, their damage is definitely threatening. Although they might not top the DPS meters, their damage profile includes massive spikes of lava burst chain lightning combos, which will be at their relative highest in Season 5 since their base damage is already super high. Honestly, you can't really go wrong having an Ellie Shaman on your team. With amazing coverage against melee and casters alike, they are arguably the best caster the entire expansion. Standing in their shadow is Destro Warlock, and before you dive into the comments just to say Destro Warlocks get cleaved and Immolate gets dispelled, they suck, just hear us out. While these statements might be somewhat true in a vacuum, just remember who Warlocks typically play with in 3v3, Ellie Shamans, and sometimes even Frost Mages. And who do they play with in 2v2? Resto Druids and Holy Paladins. All these classes provide tons of anti-melee tech that allows Destro Warlocks to absolutely dominate as a midfield zoner. And don't forget, their damage profile is just like an Ellie Shaman, sacrificing sustained damage for a chance to win the game with a single Chaos Bolt Conflag combo. So adding to their remarkable synergy with the only other S tier wizard and with a wide array of comp options, Destro definitely deserves its spot in the S tier. Being on the S tier means being the best of the best, having very few weaknesses, and if any, multiple ways to overcome them. If we had to pick between these two specs and crown a winner, it would definitely be Elemental Shaman. While these two bursty wizards will come to define the meta throughout Wrath Classic, they will be met with a bunch of contenders, and as you're about to find out, the A tier is absolutely loaded with killers. Hunter is one class that will have a relatively uniform strength across all of its specs early on. Out of all three, however, BM will be at its absolute peak during Season 5, as lower resilience and stamina values will push its damage to absurd levels. Layered on top of this is the fact that pet damage does not scale well with secondary stats and instead is designed around a relatively high baseline, which simply just means pets seem to be hitting hardest in the early expansion, making Beast Cleave a deadly setup in 3v3 and BM Enhance a viable comp in 2v2. In fact, it's the sole existence of specs like BM Hunter in Season 5 that give enormous value to Paladins. Without a pally on your team, the raw threat of aimed shot and overtuned cleave damage can feel impossible to deal with. Marks and Survival definitely have their place in the meta too. To be clear, Marks is considered by our experts to be the more versatile arena spec, since it is a bit of a departure from the linear and predictable BM playstyle. One key ability shared among all Hunter specs is Roar of Sacrifice, which is a perfect answer to Shadow Dance. Wrath isn't really known for its perfect 1-to-1 one -one cooldown trades, but this is an exception. So simply being able to counter the win condition of an enormously popular spec adds to the strength of Hunter in Season 5, and while they might be a bit squishy themselves, we think both Marks and Survival deserve their spot on the A tier. Speaking of squishy, Frost Mages are up next on our list. Of course, their wide array of roots and snares can passively reduce some melee pressure, but when up against spammable magic dispels and freedoms, Frost Mages need to be a bit more careful into the heavy hitting cleaves of the early expansion. Frost will stay highly competitive all expansion, but Rogue Mage is at its peak strength in Season 5 due to its highly overtuned burst damage into less resilient targets. In general though, Frost will remain one of the only true setup based ranged specs, which of course gives it a relatively linear and predictable playstyle and is combined with a damage toolkit that is entirely proc dependent. So although it is definitely strong, Frost Mage simply isn't as flexible enough to break through into the S tier for Season 5. 
Next up, we have Shadow Priest. This spec is a bit of a wild card and in many ways a jack of all trades but master of none. First up, its damage is actually remarkably good, when allowed to freely cast, of course. A big part of this is that their dot damage actually hurts, and VT is one of the few forms of true dispel protection in Wrath of the Lich King. But their damage alone is not enough to explain their true strength, as a huge part of it comes in the form of utility, where they have the best offensive and defensive magic dispel in the game as a DPS spec. This gives them some dynamic coverage against many of the popular meta comps in Season 5, being able to remove things like Immolate, Strangulate, and Longer CC off their partners while being able to purge important buffs like Bloodlust off of enemy cleaves. While Shadow might encounter some mana problems in longer games, the explosiveness of Season 5 will help circumvent that. Rounding out our A tier wizards, we have Affliction Warlock. This was a bit of a wild card as well. Just like Shadow Priest, Affliction has uncontested dominance of the sustained damage department, due partially to some dispel protection of their own with unstable Affliction, and just like Shadow Priest, they have a defensive dispel too, though tied to their pet on a short cooldown, giving them utility against a lot of the top tier comps in the meta. More importantly though, the reason Affliction is well positioned in Season 5 is simply due to how bad healer mana is in the early stages of the expansion. Remember, Healers can actually oom super fast in Wrath Classic, and maintaining a full row of dots on multiple players is a first-rate ticket to an empty mana bar. And with that, we have a complete picture of the A tier for ranged DPS in Season 5. Again, being on the A tier means the spec is really good and is fully capable of rank 1, or at the very least capable of getting Gladiator. Many of the specs we mentioned come with a few weaknesses, but more than enough options to overcome them. This is unfortunately not the case for our mid and low tiers. Which starts with Balance Druid. Boomkins revolve around one single gimmick. You already know this is Starfall. This one minute cooldown is the spec's main win condition. If one of its many counters are deployed while it's active, the gimmick is over. This isn't to mention their relatively lackluster defense. While they have a bit more armor in Boomkin form, their only true defensive CD can be removed with a simple purge, making them vulnerable into the majority of metacomps. And having your only defensive CD being dispellable is a massive issue into the overtuned damage profiles of the Season 5 meta. Rounding out the mid tier, we have both mage specs. Let's focus on fire first, since it is a bit more complicated. Fire has a lot of utility that looks instantly amazing on paper, which includes a proc-based disarm that can instantly remove both melee and ranged weapons on multiple players. On top of this, fire mages have a unique knockback effect, and of course, one of the best AoE CC spells of all time. So, how could they be bad? This is mostly due to their damage toolkit, which is based around hot streak, and unfortunately, crit values will not be high enough to make this playstyle feel reliable in Season 5. Overall though, Fire Mages are just the clunkiest of all the mage specs. They function more like a dot class than anything else, and have to rely on miracle crits to carry through poor stat values in the early expansion. And with that, we have our mid and low tier range DPS. Being on the mid tier generally means being capable of Gladiator in at least one bracket. These specs all have significant weaknesses that can't really be overcome in Season 5. And with that, we have a complete picture of the ranged meta in Season 5. One thing that should stick out is how bloated the A tier is. Remember that being A tier means being capable of Gladiator or Rank 1 in the right hands. In later seasons, stat values and PvE trinkets will come to distort the meta, but Elemental Shamans will remain incredibly dominant the entire time. And no matter what journey you take in Wrath Classic, we have you covered at SkillCap.com. Right now, we have hundreds of videos, including class courses and arena commentaries, instantly available at your fingertips. One subscription gets you access to Wrath Classic and Retail WoW, allowing you to stay ahead of the competition no matter what expansion you play. Take advantage of our rating gain guarantee and visit the link below for an exclusive discount offer. Alright guys, we hope you learned something useful about the ranged meta in Season 5. Give us your prediction in the comments below as to what ranged DPS you think will be the most dominant in the early expansion. In any case, thank you all for watching. See you soon.